guys how are you all doing i hope we are well welcome back to my tudor adventure and um, we are now in kirtling land um i have actually pretty much finished the whole um outfit to be honest um which is good because i've got a couple of weeks to go um but this will be the last full video that i do for this particular um outfit i will do a little bit of a roundup on a couple of other things that i've made pretty much off camera but you'll know you'll you'll get the full full reveal soon enough. Um, so today we are going to carry on and we're going to talk about the kirtle. So you can see I've made the smock, I've made my French hood. Um, so what about the main? What about the main item itself? So let's have a look and see what I get up to. So as you can see here, I'm starting to work out um, my uh, top and bottom of the skirt. Now I had a bit of a bright idea. Now I thought rather than making a full skirt pattern, um, as you can see, they can just about see in the corner there, rather than doing that all in paper, why don't I just do the top and the bottom part, the most important parts, and then just space them out according to uh, where they need to sit on the fabric. Now this idea, it was a nice idea in theory. Um, I'm not sure I can fully advocate that you should do this. I did have to struggle, make sure that angles met up and everything like that. Um, I'm really, I'm not sure that I would do it again. But what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to have huge amounts of fa uh, paper lying around for a very, very big skirt. I just thought if I had the top waist and the bottom hem with a few inches in between, so I had something to line up what would be the harm in that um and yeah it, it worked um not my brightest idea but not the worst idea i've ever had i'll be honest and i'll just piecing a little bit more there just to make sure it all fitted So here's me now pinning um, the skirt pattern pieces to the lining. As you can see, it's quite a bit narrow. I did have to do an awful lot of finagling and finessing to get this all fitted. Um, so yeah, you can see I'm thinking about everything and how much feather I've got to pull out and what, what scraps I had to use. Um, this was quite a fabric hungry um, project, I will say. And yeah, I don't, I don't have many scraps in return, which is good because I hate scraps. I, I really don't like um, cabbage like that. I don't keep it. I, I just get it recycled. Um, and you can see my lovely um, pattern paperweights there. That's me just adding some seam allowance to the top uh, side and bottom. Thank you. You can see I'm now just chopping it all out. And I was using bits and pieces. Piecing is period, as they say. And here's me using the gold, uh, the lovely green and gold taffeta that I bought. Um, again, as you can see, I've only put the top part of the um, waistline and I'm just drawing down and cutting out. And that's kind of it. That's what I did for everything, except that particular fabric I didn't have to do much with. In fact, even the green fabric was fine. So here's me trying to work out my uh, cartridge pleats for the back of um, my dress. This took an extremely long amount of time because it didn't evenly spread itself out. It was something like 12.38 inches or 2.38 inches or something like that it wasn't even so here's me with my friction pen just marking out the two lines of um, markings for my pleating you're not going to see much of this purely because I um, can't phone my phone my uh, camera uh, memory card ran out and it took me ages to realize why it wasn't recording so by the time I realized what had happened I, I kind of had pleated it so but as you can see I'm using some pretty strong um, thread uh, there and yeah pleating away at last some sewing on a sewing machine hurrah and there's just lots of seams to go and that always happens with my my faff don't know why it always falls off it's annoying
And lots more. Seems all I can say is thank God this skirt was lying because I really did not want to fill any of these down. come to some nice hand sewing um, I'm sewing in the eyelets now the book suggests that you put in you don't see much of it because it is quite a laborious boring task but basically what I did was I found a load of old grommets um, that I wasn't going to use I didn't like anyway um, so I use those as the metal eyelets in between the lining and the main fabric um, the book suggests that that's what you do you put some metal ring in there to help um, stop it from falling out because that's what the Tudors did um and so yeah i use that and then i just sewed around it but slowly building up the um the thickness going around twice um once with a little less care and second time with a bit more care and then just tying it in let's have a little bit more of a closer look shall we there we go now as you see here i, I you can't quite see them speed it up but when i slow it down you'll notice that i actually put the needle backwards so i kind of go up through the fabric like that with a needle at the top but I put it down eye in rather than point down. So you see that once more, you can see there the eye and the point goes in afterwards. This stops anything catching because I've done this before and I've ended up sewing through my own thread and ruining these holes. So that's my top tip. Put your needle down backwards through the hole. I actually quite enjoyed this, funny enough. Even though it was slightly annoying at times. Took a long time as well. There we go, that's what they look like. Ready and waiting for the cord. And there we have it. I didn't show too much of the whole process because a lot of it was just some very long, boring, straight sewing. And I, oh, the hem, yeah. Because I don't have a tailor's dummy, I couldn't get the hem, the, the hem to line up. So I had to do a lot of it on the ground and... It, <laughs> you know what it's like you know i don't want to overdo some of these videos especially when it's just boring run of the mill stuff but in a moment you shall see the kirtle in a full outfit you're not going to see everything i told you there's no no full reveals until the main day but you will see her in a minute see you in a minute So what do we think? <laughs> Wee! Wee! Woohoo! Swoosh! But... I am so pleased with this. I can't quite believe it. I'll be honest. It fits like a glove. But I am so ding-dang-doodly. Or should that be dingeth dangeth doodlyeth I'm just pleased with this, guys. Come on. I mean, you'll see I've got a couple of holes here for my sleeves. And I've got my... I think this feels too low. I, I feel a bit self-conscious about this bit, but uh, I think that's how it's meant to be. But I really... It's basically what I had in my head is what I'm wearing right now, and that so rarely happens. So I'm absolutely pleased with how it's gone. Like I said, it fits really nicely. It's not too heavy, actually. I thought it was going to be heavier. It weighs a ton on the, the hanger. But as you can see, look at the cartridge pleating. As even as I can make it. Ooh, ooh. It's giving me all this fullness. Now you're probably thinking, Harding, where are the pockets? And you'll be right, I have none. Um, I didn't quite think, initially I was going to make an overdress, an overgown that had pockets, so I was going to be able to keep my keys, my phone and a, a payment method in different different pockets. I didn't obviously do that, I decided I was going to make a partlet instead because I, I, I was burning out um, and I wanted to make sure I had a couple of weekends where I wasn't really going, oh my god I haven't got it from so rare, none of that. Um, so what I am doing is I'm going to make, I may film it, I'm not sure, um, basically a purse made out of some fabric that will be a part of the ensemble piece um, and I'm just going to attach it around my waist with the bag belt that I already have, I might wrap it up just to kind of make it fit in. 
But there you go. So I have to make a purse so that I'll, I'll be able to carry my keys, my phone and something to pay with. Um, because it is a little bit of a pub call, I will be honest. But hey, I am so pleased. I think I look very regal. I think lettuce would be pleased. I've admittedly I now realise that I'm wearing green and I've called a lettuce. I'm pretty sure that's Freudian. I didn't do it deliberately, but I like the name. And it's green. there we go it took a long time i'll be honest and i really probably could have done with some embellishment on here i know that in um in other times you know more the higher up the social strata you were the more money you had and because lettuce would have been part of um, a merchant a cloth merchant they probably would have had access to a few more jewels but you can see there's a lot of diamonds here I didn't have anything big enough, I didn't have the stomach for it, I know. So I'm just going to have to leave it as it is, but it's perfectly fine, I'm really happy with it. And yeah, so hopefully you'll um, be watching, wanting to watch some more historical stuff. I will be doing modern and historical sewing, I may be doing some other bits and pieces. Ooh, excuse my stomach. But if you enjoyed this, please share, please like, please subscribe, it means a lot to me, it really does. I know every subscriber that I have means a lot to me, but know we always like to see the numbers increasing don't we let's be honest it's that endorphin hit but this has been a crazy cat lady production so you've been watching an unoriginal idea until next time guys take care bye bye